Join me on this repair video and I'll show you how I repair this multiple damage on this front wing without any body fillers or paintwork just by using the paintless dent removal techniques. Hi, I'm Martin Saddle from Dent Remover and thanks for joining me on another PDR video. This time I've got another Seat in and it's the smallest of the range, the Seat Me. That's M-I-I. -I. Now this front wing has got multiple areas of damage and it's definitely going to take some work to straighten out. So let's go and take a look. Before I start the repair, I'm going to explain all the different areas that need repairing. By using the red line to highlight where the body line's meant to be, we can see that the wing has been severely pushed in, almost by 30mm. Then taking a look at the dent from the side, we can see how big it really is. From the heavy impact, it's created a kink at the top and this is called a crown, and there's a lot of pressure locked in this area. Looking at the far end of the wing, we have a second dent, this has also damaged the body line and there's a crown at the top. The panel edge is also kinked from the impact. Using the inspection board it really opens your eyes to see how bad this is. We can see a smaller dent again on the body line with some lock pressure above it. Away from all this damage we've got a creased dent. It doesn't look much but it is quite sharp. Looking under the body line we've got a shallow horizontal crease. And you may notice above it the body line has been pushed in over quite an area. So that's a quick explanation of the damage. We now need to lift up the vehicle and remove a few trims so we can get access to the rear of the panel. On a large scale repair like this, I want to be able to work freely from the underside without any obstructions. Luckily, most front wings come with plastic liners, and these are easy to take out, just a handful of screws and clips, give them a wiggle and they come out. So I'm going to start with repairing the largest area first. Getting my leverage device in place, I'm using the moose knuckle, I'm using my screw on tip bar with a large rubber ball. Placing a small amount of pressure on the rear of the damage, right where the body line is, I'm going to use a heat gun and get this area really warm. This is going to give the panel a lot more flexibility without any chance of the paintwork cracking. You'll notice that my thumb is on the edge of the panel and this is to stop the wing lip from blowing out while I'm giving the dent some strong pushes. Changing positions with my light board, I'm also working behind the GoPro so you can see all the pushes I'm making to gradually repair this dent. Because I'm using a large rubber ball on the end of my bar, I can give the damaged area some good solid pushes without any risk of cracking the paint. You can see that I'm continuing to lift up the damage underneath the crown, carefully working backwards and forwards. Because this crown is prominent, it's going to take some time to gradually smooth it out. And the selection of tools that I'll be using to do this, I'll be using a blending hammer and a couple of knockdowns with different shaped heads. And this is the first knockdown that I'm using and it's a crow carb knockdown and because it has a domed almost flat head it helps move a lot of metal quickly without any risk of damaging the painted surface. If you watch carefully you can see that when I'm tapping the crown down it's releasing the pressure. You can see this because the metal's moving underneath the knockdown. The panel edge where it meets the bumper is incredibly strong. This hasn't moved in the impact, but what's happened is the panel's flexed and created a really sharp crown that's difficult to smooth out. Now that the crown has been tapped down and released some of the pressure, we can go back to repair the dent just underneath it. Because I need to be a bit more precise with my pushers, we've replaced the big rubber ball tip with a blunt nose screw tip with a plastic cap. This enables me to give more precise pushers with less effort and without the risk of cracking the paintwork. The part I'm repairing now is the body line area. 
The surrounding area of this dent needs to be blended out and then we can lift up the middle with the bar from inside. I'm using a different knockdown to do this part and it has a plastic cherry cap on the end. This helps me knock down isolated areas of damage without damaging any of the painted surface. Changing the repair direction again using the moose knuckle for leverage, we can take a closer look at this body line area and there's still a lot of work to be done because the reflection of the line board is really distorted. So what I'm doing here is I'm lifting up all the low areas and the easiest way to see these is because the lines are a lot thicker. I'm concentrating my pushers above and below the body line but I want to bring this area up evenly. Once I'm happy, I'll go to the centre where the body line is and I'll do my final pushes there. On a large scale repair like this, there's so much detailed work that goes into it. Making thousands of accurate taps, each one carefully manipulating the panel back to its former shape. And as well as all the tapping, comes the pushing from the bar. Thousands of careful pushes just to get this panel back into shape. So the front part of this wing is coming along really well, but there's just some minor adjustments to make. So for this I'm using another one of my knockdowns, this time it has a sharp nylon tip. So now I've got the first part of this panel under control, it's time to look at the second area of damage. So like I did with the first part, I'm going to get this area really nice and warm. Then I'm going to go right to the centre, start pushing it out and you can notice that I've got my thumb on the edge just to stop the edge from blowing out. Once the centre of the damage is started moving, I'll then start tapping around the area with my blending hammer to tap down all the crowns. Changing my repair direction once again, I'm starting to repair the horizontal crease just below the body line. It's all looking well, just a little bit more work on this smaller dent. Before I carry on with the repair, I need to strengthen the lip edge. As you saw earlier, it's already buckled and it's lost its strength. So I need to put these vice grips on there to minimise the chance of it blowing out anymore. And you can find these in most machine shops. They're mainly used by panel beaters to hold two panels in place while you're welding them together. So this area is repairing really well. There's not a great deal more to do with this, just a bit of fine tuning. On a dent like this, you have to be really precise on every push because any miss pushes is just going to make it a lot harder for you to repair. Where this creases, the panel is concave, so any kind of imperfections are really going to stand out. Next up is to repair the lip edge, and I find that using the off dolly technique, which is a panel beating method, is the best way to do this. Using a solid mass, or a hammer shaft in this case, at the lowest part of the panel and apply pressure, then gently tapping around either side of it left to right on an offset until you level the panel up. Another little tip for repairing these edges, I use a J bar or a hook bar, mainly used for repairing doors where you need to get behind top braces. This will get you right into the inside edge of the lip. You still have to make really careful pushes because if you push too hard, that lip edge will just blow out and it's likely to crack the paint and it's really difficult to recover it once this happens. Changing the tip on my bar again, this time I'm going for an Edgy Tools Gator V tip. This is my personal favourite, it's super sharp and it's ideal for picking out those tiny little lows. Another one of my favourite tools and used for the intricate work at the final stages of repair, this knockdown from VIP Tools. 
It has a polished metal tip and it's ideal for tapping down those slight highs. Okay, that's the repair done and thanks very much for sticking with me so far. We'll take a few seconds to look at it with a natural reflection and then we'll get the inspection board out and we'll take a detailed look. Looking good so far, so if we do get the inspection board out and we can take a detailed look from each side, we can see that there's minimal distortion from the reflection and it's certainly been a tough task to repair all these dents and get it to this standard. Here's a different view of the panel edge. Using the natural reflection of the green box, red van and the fluorescent lighting, these sources of reflection are from a distance away, so this will highlight any imperfections a lot better. So that's the final inspection carried out and I'm very happy with the repair and now need to polish up the wing and get rid of all the accident scratches around the panel. Fit the vehicle back up and then we'll get it outside for another look. Okay so just before we take the vehicle outside and have a look at the finished results I'd just like to say a big thank you for watching my video so far. And if you have enjoyed it it'd be great to get a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed already it'd be great to get you on board. This repair was certainly a tricky one to do, but the results speak for itself. So that's it for now, thank you very much for watching and see you soon.